My name is Chris Glennie with Electron Services. Uh, we're going to have training today on the light control system here in the boardroom. It's the same system at, that's in the President's office. So we're just mainly focusing here. Everything basically carries over to the President's office. So what we have here is the Graphic Guide QS. It's a six zone lighting control. So a couple definitions. Each one of these is a zone. A zone is basically a string of multiple lights that we can set at different levels. Okay? These buttons on the side are called scene buttons. Scene 1, scene 2, scene 3, scene 4, scene 5. All a scene is is a preset level for all the zones to go to. That way, all you have to do is hit one button, you don't have to change six different zones. You just hit one button and that's it. So basically, the default is going to be 100% full on. 75%, 50%, 25%, and off. Okay? This fourth button has already been changed, kind of to do a conference scene. Because every, all the lights are dimmed, the lights in front of the projectors are turned off. That way, when we do have a conference, we actually see the screens and not have to worry about any glare. So the buttons here, you have an up and a down. You can control the zones individually. You can see as they change, your percentage changes. And you have a master raise lower, which does all the zones at once. And these are menu navigation buttons, which we'll get to. So all the zones have already been named to the switch legs that they correspond to. Basically, zone one is going to be your linears. Linears are going to be those guys. Zone two is going to be your perimeter lights. Perimeter down lights. Zone 3 is going to be your front and down lights, which are right in front of the main screen. Zone 4 is going to be your left niche area, basically over here, your like little coffee, coffee bar area, I'm assuming. Zone 5 is going to be the same exact area, opposite side. Zone 6 is going to be your cove lights above the main table. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. If you're not sure which is which, just push the button and it'll populate here which zone you're controlling. Okay, so now we get into the programming aspect of it. Any Lutron product that has multiple buttons on it to get into the programming mode. You're going to hold down the top button and bottom button for about three to five seconds. You get the little waterfall here, shows you're in programming mode. Okay, if you see here the little screen change to main menu. So you basically have time clock, scene setup, save mode, CCI setup, zone setup, sensor setup, shades, wireless, infrared, backlighting and diagnostics. We're only going to touch on a few of these because most of them don't apply here. So time clock, this system is capable of turning the lights on and off automatically every day. This knows that it's in Salt Lake City, it knows what time it is, it knows when daylight savings time is. So for instance, if you wanted the lights to come on every day at 8 p.m. or 8 a.m., it can be done. Time and date has already been set. and location has already been set.
You just use the up and down arrows yep. to change the... Up and down navigates. Okay, move you forward in the menu. Little clock moves you back, okay? So if we want to add an event, it's pretty straightforward. You just say, you want to add an event, pick the day you want it to happen. It'll be a local time clock since there's only one controller. You either do a time of day or astronomic. Just pick time of day. And you just pick whatever time you wanted it to happen. Say 8 a.m. And you pick the scene that you want to occur. If you see, everything changes in real time. So 8 a.m. every day, I want scene one. So you hit OK. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So to set the scene, do you just manually do individual? We'll get to that. That's next. All right, so we'll take that out just so the lights don't come on every day. So to do that, you just go down to delete events. Pick the day with the event you want to delete. There's the 8 a.m. It's seen when we just set. I'll ask you, you sure you want to delete it? Yes. That's all there is to it. Now, if you're doing multiple events throughout the day, which you're probably not, but just in case, you just set your all your events for one day. And you just copy the schedule, you'd copy that entire day. If you want same, all the same events that happen every single day of the week, just copy schedule. And it say you want to copy from Sunday to Monday to Tuesday. The important thing to note is you can't really break this, no matter what buttons you push. So don't be afraid to play with it. All right, so scene setup. This is probably where you guys are gonna get most of your calls. Right, so we come into scene setup. You got multiple options now. You got levels, labels, daylighting. We don't have any daylight sensors, so we're not going to worry about daylighting. Labels, if they decide they want to call them certain things like conference, video conference, meeting, that's where you would change it. Levels is probably where you're going to spend the most of your time. You hit OK. Now it asks you, which scene do you want to set up? Once again, it changes in real time. This has the capability of doing 16 scenes plus the off scene. However, you can only access the first four scenes in the off scene on the front cover. All the rest are done through the touch panel through, in, through integration. But if you guys need more than four scenes, it's highly unlikely. So to change it, say, okay, I want to change scene one. Hit OK. Now you basically just set your zones. So in scene one, I want everything to be you know, around 70%. Then you hit OK, adjust fade time. The fade is how long it takes to get to that scene from any other scene. The default is three seconds, it can be anywhere from instantaneous up to an hour. Default is probably going to do just fine. Set shade groups. There are no shades integrated with this system. So just hit OK. And that's all there is, that's it. So now, if you look, before, if we hit scene one, all the lights went full bright. So now if we hit scene one, it goes to the levels we just set. Okay? So we'll change this all back to <coughs> default. Scene setup, levels, scene one, and we'll just raise them all with the master raise. Three seconds. No shades, that's it. Okay, circle backs us out. Circle one more time. Save mode. This is where it can get a little bit confusing. If we hit save mode, if you look right here, it says save never. This is what we recommend leaving it in. Save never means you have to come into the programming mode to change the scene. You have to actually know what you're doing. Okay, the other options are four seams to where these don't work and just these buttons do. Button disabled where no buttons work and it's all through touch screen. Save by OK. Basically, you would make your changes 
without going into program mode. You just make your changes and hit OK and say, you want to save this scene? Yes. The problem with that is anybody can come by and do that. You mess up your scenes. Save always. Now any changes that you make automatically saves it. Not a good option. So we like to leave it as save never. And whenever you make changes, make sure the little screen says save before you back out. Okay, contact closure said so we don't have any contact closures, so we're not going to worry about it. Zone setup. And this is the only place where you can do potential damage. Everything's already been set up for the load type. Basically, it's been set as a fluorescent light. Mm -hmm. That's how the TVIs work. So in the ceiling, there's 10 volt interfaces that take our dim signal and convert them to a zero to 10 volt signal for all the LEDs. Basically, all this is doing is setting low end trim so we don't have flicker at low end. That's why we set it as a fluorescent module. But it can be lots of things. It can be fluorescent, a power module, a magnetic load, an incandescent load, uh, non-dim, DMX, more DMX, Cree LEDs, fluorescents, neons. So, shouldn't have to ever come in here unless we have a remote. Now some of the signs they don't like the way I name the zones. I'm just coming out here to zone labels. Hit OK. Pick which one you want to change. Say OK. Custom. Then you just go scroll through to whatever you want. Okay. We'll just leave it as left. Sensor setup. We don't have any occupancy sensors. We don't have any daylight sensors. Not applicable. Shades. That's why we don't have any shades. Not applicable. Shade controls are right here, right? Wireless, we don't have any wireless sensors. They're not applicable. No infrared remotes. Backlighting, if you decide you don't like the backlighting or you want it dimmer or brighter, this is where you would change it. Just leave it enabled. And diagnostics, if there ever is a problem, you call the 1-800 number, they might say, so what is, give me a link detail, what's on there? Go to diagnostics. Link info, and it goes out and it finds all the devices on the Lutron link. Basically, you have this, the integration interface, and you have two wall stations. So you should have four total devices. The buttons on these wall stations is the exact same thing as the buttons on the front. ever any issues our 1-800 number is right here in the smallest print we could possibly find you can also just neutron.com get the number off of there you guys have my business card the numbers on there that's pretty much all there is to it it's a pretty easy pretty straightforward system any questions I'm sure I'll have some later. Yeah. Um, I'll give you one of my cards too. Just, just call me. Is anybody going to explain this to the people using the room? That's for it. Yeah. Alright, so the touch screen. Where's that at? I don't know where it's going to be at. Oh. Um, but it's, it's probably going to be on the table or over here, right? There. Probably over here. Over right here. Right here. I agree. This iPad is going to be docked into there. Right, so the touch screen, when you hit to change light levels on the touch screen, all it is doing is recalling scenes that you've already stored in here. Okay? So if you want to make changes to the scenes, you have to do it in here. You can't do it through the touch screen. Okay. Warranty on all devices two years. The TVIs might be a little bit longer. I don't remember if we just swapped over. Might be over six to eight years on the, on the interfaces. For all the parts are the two year, 100% later, 100% parts coverage. Uh, I don't want to pull full out and show you. But there's a, it's all low voltage. So for some reason they stopped communicating. 
pull the control out. There is a four wire conductor, two number 12 and two number 18, 24 volts, and the two communications to make sure they're all the best stuff. Usually, if you lose communication to the waterfall, but it'll go top to bottom. It'll say, hey, there's something wrong. I mean, you do the same thing. Let's go down the top and bottom, you get the waterfall. Okay? It basically puts those into program mode. You go to the graphic eye. So, this blink in here, this means, hey, I'm listening to this wall switch. Whatever's in programming mode, I'm listening to it. Okay? You can change the control type if you wanted to. Right now, it's set up for the scene control. You can do a partition. We don't have partitions, so there's no shades. You can do individual zones if you wanted to. Um, we'll leave it as a scene control. And I'll ask you, you know, which scenes do you want to start with? Well, one through four and off. If you wanted to, you can make it five through eight, or five through nine, or 10 through 16, okay? Make sure you hit saved. Go back to the control, pull down the top and bottom again. Now you know you're out. These raise lower buttons on the bottom of the controls do the same thing as these raise lower buttons. They're just master raise lower, is all it is. Okay. It's a pretty solid system. I don't the only time we really see issues is during construction, either before, after, or remodel.